zoning for the Mattamy proposal, and uh, again, I don't think I see the applicant here. But you know, if he's here, he'll provide a. Uh, he'll at least be able to answer some questions. Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Mur Mr. Rubino. So, but good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. The application for discussion is a zoning bylaw amendment on 1280 St. John Side Road, file number ZBA 2015-14. The subject land is within an approved plan of subdivision. A condition of, uh, condition of approval required the owner to implement an interface plan between the budding residential lots in the town of Newmarket. Please note that this portion of the subdivision is not yet registered. As such, we will be reviewing the subject land as one larger property. The, the applicant is applying for a rezoning a portion of the subject lands from R295 exception zone to O17 major open space zone. The proposed O17 exception zone will be a five meter landscape buffer. The applicant is proposing new trees ranging from five to six meters in height. No new fence will be erected, however the existing chain link fence will remain. The uh, following slide is a location plan, and in red circles the subject lands. Uh, to give you some context of this area, we are located here at northwest corners of Leslie and St. John Side Road. The abutting neighbors uh, in Newmarket is Wild Rush Place. The official plan designation here is urban, des uh, urban residential one within the Aurora 2C secondary plan. Under section 3341 of the secondary plans, it actually requires a landscaped area along the north Thurnley property line within the future residential lot. This is the existing zoning bylaw R295. It is surrounded by the EP15 and environmental protection zone. The proposed O17 exception zone is once again located along the northerly portion of the of the residential lots within the town of, of, New, of Aurora side. Note this is the same exception zone used on the westerly portion of the Mattamy subdivision, which abud also abuts the town of Newmarket. And in, in addition, we want to make clear that no accessory structures are permitted within the 017 exception zone. Here we have a cross section of the proposed open space. On the left, we have a proposed dwelling in the town of Aurora, and on the right will be the town of Newmarket. And on the Aurora side, there is a proposed nine meter rear yard setback, plus a five meter landscape buffer. As mentioned, the intent of this application is to satisfy a specific draft plan condition. As such, when we circulated this application to the internal staff and external, there aren't further, there aren't any further comments to address at this moment. However, after tonight, staff will outline the matters discussed here tonight and provide a comprehensive report for council's consideration at a future general committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Any members of the public? Who are here who would wish to speak to? Please come up, sir. If you could give us your name, your address, and you have five minutes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Lou, Lou Montana, 880 Wildrush Place in Newmarket. Uh, Council, Mr. Mayor, thank you for your time. Um, first of all, I, I applaud Madame for creating this buffer. I was part of the residence group three years ago that requested this. Um, but I must say, I just um, um, continue to be concerned about what future issues we're going to have with drainage. I've seen the convoy of trucks that have been bringing down um, landfill and what they've been building up there. It's nearly 30 feet higher than what it was before. I assume that the town um, inspectors are reviewing this on a regular basis but my concern becomes drainage and what it's done to the uh, floodplain that exists behind these these properties um, that's number one concern and the other one i just i had to use this opportunity to voice uh, uh, concern and 
disappointment with what we're doing with green space in the northeast uh, corner of Aurora. This lovely little valley, uh, we used to walk our dog and do snowshoeing there with Mr. Blue, the farmer. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of land that could have been preserved. Um, and along with preserving your heritage, Aurora, please, you need to conserve further green space. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other members from the public wish to speak to this application? I don't know if there is um, anyone from Mattamy here to, to speak to this particular application. Mr. Ramuno, do you have any, um, any comments that uh, could help Council? Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the Madam E. Rep was supposed to be here this evening. Um, all I can add is that um, um, we knew when, uh, at the t as the last speaker spoke, at the time of the uh, approval of the uh, secondary plan, the residents from Newmarket uh, were involved in the, in the negotiations uh, during the, uh, uh, the OMB hearing um, and where Madam e, uh, worked with the residents further to the west provide a, an open space uh, designation in rear yards and a combination of fencing and landscaping and they committed to uh, to do the same here and that's reflected in our 2c secondary plan where we've got identified uh, these the portion of their these uh, future lots to have a the appropriate interface and Madame is following through with what they uh, committed to doing uh, four or five years four or five years ago thank you mr. Romano. Council, I'll ask if there's any com uh, questions either for, um, for Lawrence or, or Mr. Vermuto with respect to this from a presentation point of view. Councilor Thompson. Can Mr. Vermuto speak to the concern raised by the resident from Newmarket with regards to the, the grading and the height difference? Mr. Vermuto? Certainly through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Um, this this portion has not been uh, uh, registered yet, but they, Mattamy is just about complete with the pre-servicing pre of the majority of their lands uh, in this area. Uh, our staff have, uh, are reviewing or have completed the review of all the engineering submissions. With respect to drainage, uh, I can assure the residents and council that um, all the uh, drainage will have to be uh, dealt with on site and, and the shouldn't be any uh, drainage spillover to the uh, lands to the north. The appropriate um, swales, uh, catch basins, and storm sewers uh, will, will need to be installed here. Uh, the comment with respect to the green space, I think this council is aware of uh, the amount of green space that was uh, identified in the 2C secondary plan and protected for. Uh, this uh, finger of development here was identified as a future residential within the 2C secondary plan. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, Madame committed to ensuring that there was that appropriate buffering uh, uh, to the new market existing residents immediately to the north. Councillor? Any other comments for Mr. Moon, Councillor April? This is not the report, this is just general question if you have. Uh, just on the comment on the um, I, I appreciate the comment on the drainage I also uh, note that uh, there's a great deal of green space that has been preserved in the feature forest um, but there is an impact on those uh, uh, in a uh, new market uh, and I don't know that they have any forest in their immediate area uh, it looks to me just this part is all built out uh, but uh, both communities plan for green space. Um, what is noteworthy is that the residents commented that they would want a buffer and this developer uh, created that buffer. So uh, in my mind, that's good planning principles. It's a, it's a street that has houses on both sides and the existing establishments even though they're not in our town, they've created a five-foot landscape buffer. And I, I just, I think that's noteworthy. Thank you, Councillor Abel. Any other comments for Mr. Romuno? Thank you. I'll close the public portion of the meeting. If someone would please put the uh, motion on the floor, please, Councillor Perry. Thank you. Second, Councillor Tom. Comments or questions to that? Councillor Gardner. Yeah, Councillor Gardner. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Muno. Mr. Muno, the resident uh, from Newmarket did mention, and I don't know if these are, are um, 
the right descriptive words, but that there was flood plain behind this area that's been filled in and raised? Mr. Miller? Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, no. The, uh, um, the application before us, um, there is an environmental protection area to immediately to the south, uh, not to the north. And so uh, the subdivision layout um, complies with, uh, with the official plan and all the natural heritage system has been protected. This additional five meter uh, of open space swath, uh, swath that Madame is committed to would be on the proposed lots and it'd just be a dual zone where there'll be some landscaping and uh, no additional structures would be allowed. But these, this air, five meter area is not within the floodplain. It is part of the developable lot. Councilor? Thank you. Um, yeah, in the purpose of the report, it says uh, five meters private landscape buffer and the designation is major open space. So uh, um, just to clarify that, if it's private landscape buffer, that means it belongs to the properties that it adjoins? Through you, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Mayor? Sure, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the lands are currently zoned um, a residential zone. As part of this rezoning application, the proposal is to zone that five meter swath as major open uh, space just to recognize that it'll, it'll be a, a landscaped area, but it will be part of the lot and owned by the future, future homeowner. So it'll be uh, the residential lot will have a residential uh, zone on the front portion, that back five meter portion will have a, uh, an open space uh, zone. Councilor? <clears throat> and it's, it's, a pr it's private open space, and that means that it belongs to the actual lot that it's adjoining. That's, that's what Mr. Wu said. Yes. No, I, I, but I'm not sure on that. So then how can we ensure that the landowners don't um, do things on that, that, that five meters that might be inappropriate? I, and I, I would, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm talking about building things or I would digging suggest things that that's, in the ground. That's an issue that we have in any property in Aurora. So. You know, if, if someone wants to okay, put up an illegal so structure, they, they try will this do that. again. Is it going to be in the conditions of purchase and sale of the homes that they are not to do anything Mr. to Mayor? this five meters? To you, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, it'll be part of the uh, office of purchase and sale. It'll be part of the zoning bylaw, and uh, then it's a matter of uh, enforcement. But the future homeowner will be fully aware of the uh, zone and the restrictions on that back portion of their lot. Thank you, and that would carry forward with the sale of the lot. Um, and I also would like to thank Madame. Uh, this was a big issue. Tonight we have one resident from Newmarket, but we've had many residents from Newmarket come to council and ask for this consideration. So uh, I'd like to thank Madame for that. Any other comments or questions on this item? Calling the vote then, all in favor? Contrary? That's carried, Madam Clerk. Item three. I bet that's Drew. Uh, Drew, uh, Drew McMartin will provide an uh, overview of the next application and the, uh, the owners and their planning consultant from Humphreys Planning uh, Group are here as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council. Uh, the application before us this evening is a draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment application. The applicant is a numbered company, 2352107 Ontario, Inc. Uh, we refer to it as Aurora Mills. You may hear that name, Aurora Mills. The location is 1588 St. John Side Road, and file numbers have been previously mentioned, but they're sub-2015-02 and ZBA-2015-05. The proposal before us tonight, as previously mentioned, is a draft plan of subdivision application proposing 10 employment blocks. In total, that is 7.0 hectares of area and one environmental protection block totaling 10.4 hectares of the site. So over 50% of the site will be environmental protection. There is also a zoning bylaw amendment application to rezone the subject lands from rural zone to business park exception zones. 
environmental protection zone, and major open space exception zone. Here we see the subject lands. Uh, subject lands are located on the northeast corner of Leslie Street and St. John's Side Road. And the shading in gray to the north is Newmarket. And the most adjoining street is Stuffles Crescent. In regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as Business Park 1, Environmental Protection Area, and Stormwater Management Facility by the Aurora 2C Secondary Plan Area, also known as OPA number 73. The business park component of the 2C Secondary Plan Area is planned to accommodate a wide range of employment opportunities, which promote sustainable economic growth, local employment opportunities, and diversification of the employment place. The official plan policy also ensures that employment lands are used to their fullest and highest potential while achieving the highest design standards possible for employment-related development. Here we see the official plan number 73 designation. One point I will mention, uh, located near Leslie Street, just above the, the white road there, uh, we see some stormwater management facility. That designation is being pursued as developable area due to rainscaping that they're doing and low impact development. So rather than storing all of their stormwater and that designated stormwater area, a lot of that water is going into the ground and that stormwater facility is no longer required. Regarding the zoning bylaw amendment, the property is currently zoned rule zone by the town zoning bylaw 2213-78. And as previously mentioned, the owner has applied to rezone the lands to BP, Business Park Exception Zones, EP, Environmental Protection Zone, and O, Major Open Space Exception Zones. Here we see a breakdown of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, the EP lands are located to the north with the O-XX as the buffer between the developable area and the environmental protection. Regarding the proposed draft plan of subdivision, uh, there's 10 employment blocks totaling 7.0 hectares, and again, as previously mentioned, the 10.4 hectares of employment area. In addition, there's a 10-meter 10 10 wide buffer block as well, and that totals 0.46 hectares inside, and it's provided between the employment blocks and the EPA. A municipal road with a 23-meter right-of-way is proposed to service the site with connections to Leslie Street and St. John's Side Road. A second municipal road with a 20-meter right-of-way provides a secondary connection to St. John's Side Road and a connection to Street A. Here we see the proposed draft plan of subdivision. Block 11 to the north is the environmental protection area, and the 10 employment blocks are shown to the south. Street A runs from Leslie Street to St. John's. Street B comes from St. John's and runs into Street A. Here we see an overlay of a conceptual mass master plan site design. So this overlay is taken from the proposed draft plan of subdivision, superimposed on the draft plan of subdivision. I would caution that these are just conceptual at this point, as no site plan is before council here this evening. And again, here we see just a rendering of what could be proposed at the site. In regards to preliminary comments, Comments from residents, nothing formal was submitted. I did speak to several residents of Newmarket located in, on Stuffles Crescent. Uh, their concern was primarily that the environmental protection area uh, directly adjacent to their properties to the south, uh, in this case the northern portion of the property, would be maintained. The consideration of the subject application relative to existing and future surrounding land uses to assess the compatibility and appropriateness of the proposed draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment will be explored further by staff. In addition, recommendations of implementation measures to ensure compliance with OPA 73 and the original OP policy that limits the non-employment uses on the lands to a maximum of 20% will also be explored by town staff. In conclusion, staff will undertake a technical review of the subject application addressing the outline matters as well as the comments received from the public and council raised at the public planning this evening and a comprehensive report with recommendations and options will be presented for consideration and direction at a future general committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Any members of the public?
care to speak to this, please? Oh, I'm sorry, the applicant gets to speak now. I apologize. Geez, I just did this twice. I should know that, right? Good, good. I thought I was out of order. <laughs> uh, good evening, members of council and mayor. Uh, I have a somewhat lengthy presentation, but uh, Drew covered most of it, so uh, I won't... Uh, I won't go over it too much. As you can see, we're at uh, the northeast corner of Leslie and uh, St. John. Uh, again, uh, this is actually more information about the property just in terms of the size. Uh, we have had regional expropriations uh, taken from the frontage of the property in two different locations. Uh, we're currently in process of getting two of those back as they were just for temporary easements. So um, the overall site area will be 19.4 uh, 19 hectares. Uh, as Drew's gone over the proposed plan of subdivision, this is just it colored basically, showing the EPA lands to the north and the employment blocks to the south as well as the road. Uh, the environmental land is uh, surrounding the Wesley Creek. It's offset a minimum of 30 meters from that creek. Uh, in addition, in certain areas where the uh, offset is greater than the 30 meters, that's based on the surveyed uh, drip line per the LSRCA, not TRCA. <laughs> um, and the buffer block is in addition to that and highlighted in green there. Uh, the employment blocks are shown here and as Drew mentioned, there are 10 of them. And the right of ways are right here. Um, the locations where street A meets each of the major roads are proposed to be signalized and full moves, while street B, the proposal is for right in and right out access. Uh, again, this is the conceptual uh, site plan. Uh, again, as we said, it's, uh, it's conceptual. There's no site plan application at this moment before the city. Uh, this is the same renderings Drew showed again. <laughs> and the proposed zoning bylaw exceptions being the same as Drew mentioned, and uh, basically having the effect of allowing additional commercial permission similar to other developments uh, for employment in the area, uh, specifically BP uh, Exception Zone 5, which is south on, um, south on Leslie. Um, and the proposed density and height um, variances would be to implement the policies of the uh, secondary plan already, which is 2.5 FSI and a height of 5. Uh, so. That's uh, the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you. I, I should point out it's very important to get the proper conservation authority. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I noticed that previous to uh, walking in here. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Any members of the public here to speak to this particular application tonight? If you could give us your name and address, sir. Robert Hodson of W.R. Hodson and Associates. My client is 721312 Ontario, Inc., the owner of approximately 100 acres of land within the 2C area secondary plan, OPA 73, being part of lot 25, concession 3, 1675 St. John Side Road East, with frontage on the south side of St. John Side Road east side of Leslie Street and the west side <clears throat> of Highway 404. My client is not here to object to this application, but rather seek information and confirmation. OPA 73 presently states no more than 20% of the employment within the business park designation shall be allocated for ancillary uses. The region contains similar policy with respect to employment lands. However, ancillary uses are not permitted to exceed 15% of an employment area. As you recall, I was here uh, a few months ago with regards to the same uh, policy. <clears throat> we understand the town of Aurora is planning to change OPA 73 respecting ancillary uses to region of York current policy 15 percent. 
We have two questions concerning the sole reuse <coughs> policy, both existing and proposed. Is the Region of York Official Plan 2010 being evaluated to use this proposal? Or is the Region of York new policy of 15% being used to review this application? We understand from your report number PL15095 that was to be before committee on December the 1st, 2015 was, withdra with, was withdrawn. It contains the information previously requested by the committee regarding what the policy of other municipalities within, within the region of York uh, are doing concerning ancillary uses and the percentage. From that report, you will see that the majority of the municipalities have not adopted the regional new policy. We would also like to know when did the region of New York propose this new official plan amendment. We never heard of it before, so we haven't had the opportunity to respond to it but someone must know when the region passed that official plan amendment. We therefore, as outlined in my October 2nd letter, 2015, to the members of council and mayor, and copy to the director of planning, that no policy change regulating the 20% ancillary uses based on employment be made. This would allow all landowners to be treated the same. I must mention that my client's land is one of the last, one of the last pieces of property to be considered in the 2C area for employment lands. Of all the lands that have now been approved or will be approved by the town of Aurora, about 75% of the 2C uh, employment lands are covered under the 20% designation and ancillary uses. We would like council's assurance that the 20% and ancillary use, uses based on employment as is the present policy, be used for all 2C lands and no changes will be made to the existing approved OPA 73 respecting ancillary uses and then all property owners will be on the same level field uh, when my client uh, proceeds with the development of his property. If you have any questions, I'd be pleased to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Hyson. We appreciate you coming up. I'd to see if there's anybody else with respect to this application who would like to speak. Mr. Ramuno, um, it might be beneficial to have uh, you comment on that. And we had a bit of a discussion this afternoon. Perhaps you could uh, enlighten Council. Certainly. To you, Mr. Mayor, um, <clears throat> the application before us, uh, the uh, draft plan of subdivision and zoning amendment are being reviewed vis-a-vis uh, -vis our current uh, uh, in effect 2C secondary plan and the business park policies in that secondary plan allow for ancillary uses up to 25% of the, of the uh, secondary plan employment area. Uh, the speaker is referring to a, a proposed amendment that uh, I had brought forward to council to uh, harmonize our policy with the regional policy, which was a, in effect a change from 20 to 15 percent of a land area within 15 uh, percent of the land area within a secondary plan could only be devoted to uh, retail commercial uses. Again, the application before us uh, has been submitted. Uh, it came in a number of months ago. It's being reviewed uh, based in accordance with the in effect uh, policy in our plan, which is 20 percent. Uh, of the employment within a uh, 
the employment area is, can be devoted to retail and commercial uses. And based on our review, the application as submitted, they are within that 20 percent um, uh, requirement, but it's something that we're going to want to take a close look at. But again, uh, our policy is what will govern the subdivision and the uh, and the zoning amendment application, not the cur uh, the region's current policy of 15 percent. So, Mr. Ramon, if you, can you you withdrew the um, uh, the recommendation to council, so we we're still at the 20 percent of potential employment versus 15 percent of, of area. Um, do you see that coming back? Can you explain perhaps where the region sits on this? I think that'd be beneficial for council if you could explain where, explain, pardon me, where the region sits on that, and what is the likely plan for that coming back to us? Certainly, um, the region, um, uh, when they were developing their 2010 plan, uh, originally had a 20 percent um, um, policy. Uh, Throughout, through their process and their plan was appealed to the OMB, uh, they revised it to 15% of the land area uh, for the simple reason that uh, the, the way their policy is worded, 15% of uh, land area is really easier to, uh, for local municipalities, quite frank, frankly, to uh, monitor and enforce the amount of commercial, uh, proposed commercial uses within a, an employment area. Um, so uh, we brought that forward. Uh, we still need to take a, a look at that. The region is not requiring us to make that change. Uh, they are satisfied with our current uh, provision being 20% of, uh, of an employment area can be devoted to uh, uh, retail commercial uses. But again, it's really a question of calculation. I don't want to take too much time, but currently the 20% policy allows allows us to uh, factor in a total uh, gross floor area of, of the proposed development. So in this case, um, I can refer council to uh, page to bottom of 26, this applicant, uh, just below the chart, um, they're proposing a total of 40, 26, uh, which is item three, page six. six. They are proposing and they're, sh they're showing a total of 42,000 square meters of future uh, uh, building uh, gross floor area. And the breakdown is, uh, based on that 20% factor, uh, 8,400 square meters can be devoted to retail uses. Thank you, Mr. Romero. Any other members of the public at this point? Council, any comments uh, to Mr. Um, McMartin, sorry, Drew, <laughs> to Mr. McMartin's uh, presentation. Council, pardon me, Councilor Perry? I've got some questions for the applicant. Okay, please, sir. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would assume, and I just want to make sure that you guys are requesting the amendments to the, uh, or the exceptions to the zoning, and it's not something that we're, being, we're imposing on you. No, 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 we're requesting them, yes. And could you just go into a little bit of detail which, what each block specifically you're looking to achieve through yeah. those? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, yes, of course. Uh, um, so in the environmental protection area and the open space area, we're actually not requesting anything. So those, that's just kind of a, a notation, stylistic type thing there. But uh, in terms of the BP... X1, 2, and 3. What we're requesting in, in essence is additional commercial uses to allow for, uh, it just kind of broadening the horizon of what's permitted. Uh, it's how we came up with the list in essence is from a previous uh, approvals you've already granted to the south. We've used the same list of additional uses in a business park area that they used. It's uh, BP exception zone five, I believe. So we've asked for, in essence, the same things. I think we did, uh, we did ask for seven stories in height, which is per the OP. We did ask for 2.5 uh, density with uh, FSI, which is per the OP. The decreases in landscaping buffer are to the north along that open space area. Uh, the point being that we didn't think that we needed to provide a landscape buffer to the open space buffer. Uh, so that's why that is uh, being decreased. The decreased, uh, there are decreased lot frontages. 
um, minimum frontages to provide more of a building edge along uh, Leslie and, um, and St. John per our urban design brief, basically to create gateways into it. Uh, there's also, uh, sorry, off the top of my head, I should be able to tell you this, but I will look at my notes. <laughs> I know I am missing one. Uh, yeah, and there's a decrease in the minimum lot sizes. So through the plan of subdivision, we're creating those 10 employment blocks, which in essence will become 10 separate uh, properties. Uh, the frontages on some of them are not per the requirement. They're slightly less. Uh, at this point, that's just for flexibility to break up the land. Um, happy to take further questions yep. on that. And, and just for clarification, what's the major differentiating factor between BP2 and BP3? Uh, two and three. I believe in two, there is provision for a supermarket, whereas in three, that provision doesn't exist, and there's provision for a gas station. Other way around? I have uh, <laughs> Councillor Abel Thompson Maracas. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll save my comments for uh, staff. So, Thank Mr. You. Mayor, just because I, I... I'm sorry. I don't often, you know, ask these questions. I just wanted to get clarification. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. I will secede the floor uh, if anybody else wanted to speak. <laughs> Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey. This is you. our last meeting of the year. <laughs> Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Would you mind putting up the uh, conceptual master plan? Um, I, I know that, uh, yeah. oh, granted, thank thanks, you. I know, granted, that uh, this is not necessarily what will happen, but um, uh, if I can ask, is the plan to construct this in phases? Uh, I, I don't know that that's actually been determined yet. I would assume so, but I don't know for sure. And so, you know, as you, I previously identified, I mean, essentially there's 10 separate blocks, so theoretically you could. Uh, build the retail commercial components first and leave the office and, and the employment piece to the end. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think uh, I think that'll <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think that'll probably be determined based on the way the uh, the zoning is eventually written and the um, well it'll be probably more dependent on the zoning exactly yet. Yeah. Uh, I could foresee that happening. Uh, it just depends on how it's regulated, yeah. Thank it might you. be a question for uh, yeah, and, and we've had the question in the past with regards to other developments. That's why I just wanted to know your mm -hmm. plan. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Marakis, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the proponent. I, I noticed on, uh, on the projection of the gross floor area, uh, when it speaks to employment and non-employment, it, it mentions hotel uses. And I know we're not doing a site plan, but is the intention to have a hotel in this area? Uh, yes. Yes, it is right now. It's in the uh, northeast corner at the present moment. Um, it's something they're looking to attract, so yes. Okay. Thank you, that's, that's good news. I think the hotel will come in right after the Michael Thompson Memorial Interchange. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's an inside joke, I apologize. Any other comments for the proponent? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Samantha, if you could bring the um, motion up, please. Thank you. Which, Councillor Tom, Councillor Peary, second. Comments or questions? I had Councillor Abel, Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, I was going to, and I, and I just am reminded of uh, another application we had uh, south of Wellington, uh, where we're amassing um, employment and creating uh, commercial space, and uh, the the applicant showed on his rendering, and we have it. Oh, we have it here on page 36 of our agenda, uh, page 16. So, and, and I could have asked um, the applicant, but maybe Mr. Ramuno can help us. So on the left on Leslie Street at Wellington, this would be commercial and uh, the applicant said that it could be a supermarket or a gas station. St. John's. St. John's and Leslie. But we did have another one at yep. Wellington. Okay, so I am mixed up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. St. John's and, and uh, Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> it, the last meeting here. So I'm looking at the white parts there on the left, and that would be the commercial parts, uh, Mr. Ramuno. 
So you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, th that's correct. At this at this conceptual stage, uh, yeah, if you can put that up on the screen, the uh, they're trying to orient the majority of the retail commercial uses uh, along Leslie uh, in that uh, St. John's corner. Something that we're going to have to work with them again to ensure that um, you know that um, amount of commercial use doesn't exceed 20 percent and the easterly half the taller buildings the seven-story buildings those are essentially the business park uses the office there's a they're proposing a garage structure a parking structure and, and offices um, a variety of uses are permitted within the BP offices hotels some retail manufacturing as well thank you and um, I think if, with the agreement would we allow commercial to be built as a percentage of employment uh, as opposed to, like I would like to be clear are we going to grant 100% of the commercial and then worry about the employment or are we going to incrementally employment commercial employment commercial that's that's my that's question right. and I want to know if that's going to be borne out do you mr. mayor um, we've uh, the Emory Business Park, and it's a similar proposal that council dealt with, I think, two years ago. We approved the zoning. We didn't put any phasing restrictions uh, within that zoning bylaw. Uh, so, you know, we, we zoned uh, those lands, the majority of those lands along Leslie Street to allow some uh, retail commercial uses and uh, inward over to the 404 uh, business park uses. So we restricted it through the zoning bylaw, but that means it doesn't, it's not going to stop the developer from proceeding to build out the retail commercial uses first um, and we would just have to wait for the office use to come when, when the market is there. Um, we did put in a phasing provisions in our uh, business park uh, on the south side of Wellington Street between Leslie Street and, uh, and the 4-4. Uh, that was a, a, a different secondary plan area where we agreed to expand and allow standalone commercial uses. And in that instance, we did put in uh, phasing provisions where we allowed a certain amount of commercial to be built up front. Beyond that amount, we then the zoning bylaw then requires a certain amount of business park or office type uses. But within the 2C uh, business park area, uh, we haven't in uh, incorporated any uh, phasing provisions. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rubino. Uh, but I would note, and, and I think it's a fair comment, that the Emory uh, development has significantly less uh, opportunity on just Leslie Street. It goes much further deeper in than this uh, application here, which is corner lot and has significantly more. So, um, you know, I would still be interested to know if, if the applicant could satisfy my curiosity on how they plan to phase that in. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Don. I mean, you know, concept, can, I, can we put the, the 3D rendering back up on the screen? I mean, conceptually, you know, the development of the business park looks great, but personally, I'm most interested in the easternly portion in terms of what we need in, in the community as opposed to the westernly portion. And so, I, you know, I share the concerns about phasing. Um, you know, we learned that lesson previously. I know Mr. Muno commented about uh, the suddenly lands uh, that Smart Center has uh, in Wellington, but it, it came about because um, the northernly lands that they have, I mean, it was the same sort of concept where, you know, let us build the commercial first and then we'll build the office buildings and everything else on the, on the westernly portion. And as you know, we're all still waiting for that to happen. And so that's why last term, uh, when that property was brought before council, the decision was to put in a phasing pr uh, process. Granted, I understand that, you know, it's not necessarily apples to apples. There was some, uh, the 2B rules as opposed to this being in the 2C property. But, you know, Emory to me is more like the Don Hillock lands. And so, you know, I would like to see some phasing pr provisions in here because otherwise, you know, we're talking about a business park designation, but without those westernly office buildings being built, there's no business park. It's just a, it's just a commercial development. It's just, you know, as we would zone it as a, as a, uh, no different than the uh, uh, designation for the property at uh, Bayview and St. John's. It's just a C2 or whatever that designation is. So, uh, you know, I know that it's permitted to have 20%, but, you know, if there's no employment, then what's 20% of zero? 
So, my, I just would like to see some sort of phasing provision that, you know, in order for them to move forward on the commercial retail component, there needs to be um, some office provisions as well. Other speakers, please, to the item. Councilor Gardner. Thanks to Councillor Thompson for that point. That's really important. Um, so how would we go about doing that? Putting in... I'm sorry? Through you, Mr. Mayor, how would we go about uh, ensuring that we just didn't get a commercial retail development for many years without the employment uses? Mr. Reno. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Certainly, I'm going to have to have, a, you know, based on what I've heard, I'll have a discussion with the, uh, with the applicant about, uh, you know, trying to incorporate some type of phasing provision. Uh, but again, uh, in, in our past example in 2C, um, you know, the lands that are zoned for commercial uses um, have been allowed to proceed. The balance, being the easterly portion, um, would not have any um, commercial uh, provision. So when the market is there for those office buildings, uh, they could only be d developed for those office or manufacturing warehousing type uses. But I, I'll certainly have a discussion with the applicant and uh, report back to council on whether we can, uh, we, we, they're agreeable to uh, incorporate some phasing provision and what they're going to look like. Councilor Gardner. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, can you remind me with the 20% ancillary uses, are they allowed to be standalone? Do we grant an exception for Wellington, south of Mr. south Mayor. of Wellington? So, you, Mr. Mayor, uh, yeah, just to be clear, our 2C secondary plan specifically permits uh, standalone uh, retail commercial uses, uh, gro grocery stores, restaurants. Standalone are permitted as a right. In our previous business park um, area, the 2B business park okay. uh, secondary plan that was uh, created back in 2000. Uh, uh, the only retail or commercial uses that are, were permitted were not standalone. They had to be integrated within an office building. Uh, but that amendment that we dealt with uh, three or four years right. ago for the smart centers, we expanded and allowed, expanded the commercial uses and allowed standalone based on that phasing uh, provision and the ratio between commercial and uh, office uses. Thank you. Um, and the applicant mentioned. Uh, broaden uses as per another application. What application was he referring to? To you, Mr. Mayor, I think he was referring to the, the Emory Business Park, uh, the zoning bylaw. They used that as an example uh, to draft their, uh, their zoning amendment application. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I also didn't catch what block the gentleman was speaking to when he was speaking to the 20% ancillary uses. Was, did he say block 20? Mr. Mayor? Ooh, no, through, through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. No, the amount of, uh, well, the area or the buildings that are going to be devoted to the retail commercial uses uh, are essentially the, uh, the, those buildings that you see along the westerly half of the, uh, of the subject lands. Thank you. I w I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. I, and I didn't get the gentleman's name, um, but not that gentleman, the gentleman sitting beside you. <laughs> what, what block he was referring to? <laughs> To, to, to you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mayor, the, uh, Mr. Hodgson is representing the landowner who owns the uh, 100 acres south of, well, south of uh, St. John's. Immediately which, south. Immediately of south of St. John's between Leslie and the 404. Thank you. No application has been submitted Thank you. on those lands. Councillor Peary. Uh, I don't want to pigeonhole this, this uh, business park owner to ensure that they build a hotel uh, or, or offices prior to being allowed to build um, any commercial. I think there's a major differentiating factor between uh, the site we looked at a few years ago where we did allow for the phasing in, or we ensured that there was phasing in to this site. And as much as I'd like to say that we have an interchange there today, we don't. Um, and the feasibility and the viability of, of a major hotel chain coming in tomorrow, in my opinion, and putting something in that at a site where there isn't an interchange, I think really would slow down the whole process. And, and if we are thinking about phasing it in, um, I'd want to make sure that we're fully aware of all the ramifications of that to, to when we can get started 
um, on having some development at this portion of town. Um, also, you can't tell me that the residents who are moving in in this area wouldn't go shopping at a, a, a grocery store in the area right away. We're adding services for them. I think it would be beneficial to have something up and running. Um, I, I do agree that if we did have uh, an interchange right there and they were only phasing in with the commercial side at first, but they weren't moving on anything else, I'd have concerns. But we don't have an interchange there at this point in time. Um, maybe that's something you, you consider um, when we're making that decision. Thank you, Councillor Peary. Other speakers, please. If there's no other speakers, calling the vote. All in favor of the proposal, please. Contrary? That is carried. Thank you very much, Council. Madam Clerk, we'll just move to the confirming bylaw. <coughs> Councilor Tom, Councilor Kim, all in favor? Contrary, that is carried. Motion to adjourn, please. Councilor Abel, Councilor Thompson, thank you very much. All in favor? Contrary, carried. Season's greetings to one and all. Thank you for coming. And staff, thank you very much. <laughs>